What is this thing doing here? What are you doing here? It's, it's possible by a black person, it's possible by a Ghanaian, it's possible by somebody from West Africa. Right. You don't, you don't have to be foreign to, to get it going. So right. I am motivated to be able to show people that, look, I didn't have to be somewhere to be able to do this. <laughs> Hello viewers, you are watching another episode of Young Entrepreneurs Speak, the show about young entrepreneurs in Ghana and beyond, which tells you about the successes behind the businesses they are currently running. Now today's guest grew up as a kid, just drawing, you know, on sketch pads. Today he's grown up into a gentleman who is a multiple award winning individual and is known for his production designs on many movies, television and events in Ghana and beyond. His name is Tony Tometi and he's truly a jack of all trades and a master of many. Let's delve into Tony's world and understand how he comes about with his creative designs. Hello Tony and welcome to Young Entrepreneur Speak. Thank you. How are you doing? Very well. So I mean I've given you accolades but I'm sure people still want to know who really is Tony. My name is Tony Prince Tometi. I'm a production designer, mm -hmm. art director, set designer and um, I think I've been doing this for how long? 12 to 13 years now? Oh wow. Yes. Okay. You've been doing this for quite a while. So tell us about how you started. Growing up, you said um, mm -hmm. you were, you know, basically just drawing. So did you always know that this is what you wanted to do in the future? No. Okay. I'm, I began just, you know, liking art and just, you know, doing everything arty. But I think when I got to, after, you know, I went to Presec, okay. read art in Presec also. After Presec, I want to do be in the audiovisual industry. I, I felt like that. So what I used to do at a point in time, I remember was, I used to like watching TV and I like commercial. Like commercials right. are done by like channel two, uh, multiple concepts, like different people. Right. And then I would find myself writing a letter and a note, trying to, you know, to them and say, oh, I like this commercial, it was done nicely. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't know what <laughs> went into it, right. but I just appreciated what had been done. I wanted to, um, read that and I thought the other way to do it, the best way to do it was to go to school and read graphics. Right. So I was going to go to tech at a point in time in my life. So I remember applying to tech and my mom once said to me, no, I think you enjoy watching movies, you should go to film school. I said, no, I'm going to go to tech. I don't know why I have to go to film school. She said, no, this is the best way. But it took some time. She had to convince me, she had to get people to talk to me. She got Reverend Hesse to talk to me because at the time Reverend Hesse was our neighbor who was, okay. you know, I mean, Ghana is one of Ghana's foremost um, cinematographers. Right. I, I just yeah, said, I okay, fine, you. let's let's apply also. So when admissions came, she just didn't, she said, I'm not going to pay the fees for tech. So you no. got admission into tech and admission into yeah. NAFTI. You yeah. got both of them. Yeah, okay. because actually I think at tech I applied twice. The first time, no. Okay. Second time, yes. But she just said, I'm not going to pay for tech. Yeah. When I went to film school, which is NAFTI, I don't think I regretted it yeah. anyway. It was it was just a space that allowed me to be able to do what I actually wanted to do, like the industry in which I wanted to be. Why did you want to go to tech and go do graphics? I thought to be able to get into what I was going to do, mm -hmm. because a lot of people that you know I knew uh, had to go through reading graphics before and then end up going to advertising, you know, institutions okay. and blah. Like that. I, I figured I was probably young, I didn't do any more research to find right. out okay, what I really had to do to, to enter the industry. But I think she probably saw into me what it was and I mean as a parent, she, she probably, you know, made the right decision for me. Just like they say, they say mom's no best. Yes. So. <laughs> when I even applied to, to NAFTI, she actually didn't know what I was going to read. So but, what exactly you did know? you apply for in so NAFTI then? I applied for the art direction course. Okay. And so for one year or two years, I was doing Art direction, but she didn't even know what it was. Okay, so I was same here. I don't know what art direction is. It help me to understand it better. In film, it um, has to do with um, you're responsible for the visual look right. of, uh, of the production. So you create the world in which the performances happen. 
so for example this is this is all part of our direction just okay. even just put place in this here like right. using that and making a statement is all part of our direction so it's you're just creating a world oh i see for what you know the event must happen and take place in i read online about how you you know you were part of the beast of no nations um team and crew right. so what exactly did you do on beast of no nations and what was that like so i i guess that, that was smile on your face. that was that was a lot of work i mean yeah. you don't work for like three months i probably haven't done a longest project three months like that before i'm busy and i'm from here i do a lot of things from here Anybody else that was coming from inside would want to find out somebody who, who's here who knows the sure. space and who knows how to get the things around and how yeah. to create the things. So on, on the film, uh, on the credit, I'll be called a lead man. Okay. Right? I department lead man. But I am almost responsible for making sure and to, to get in everybody with the production design, I direct everybody, like, this is this is where to go, this is how we have to do it, and this, you know, if we do it like this, it will work, blah, blah. If I had an idea of, I, let's do it this way, we all just go ahead and do it that way, you know? So can you recollect, or do you remember a certain instance in Beast of No Nations where you said, okay, let's try and do it this way versus that other way? There's a scene in the market, and, um, um, of course, we had to create a bullet holes, fine, we talked about that, which is pretty, pretty, I wouldn't say easy, but then we were chiseling walls. But then we also wanted to make the walls look like bent walls. Okay. And I remember the team from the U.S. had brought a can spray, sort of, that, you know, for bends and things. And yeah. I, I didn't, I just felt like it was not the thing to do. I just had a different idea to, to do it. And, but then they were like, oh, let's try, let's try. And then we, we kept trying. And then it was, even them, it wasn't, it wasn't working for them. I was like, no, I think we should do what I'm saying. So I remember when we came back, um, close up day we came back to our office mm -hmm. and I said, let's do this, what I'm saying, I think it will work. They thought what I was saying would take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I didn't see how it was going to even work. And I remember um, Imba, Prashid, and I said, you know what, Tony, you should go with Godfred, this person, that, and just go and do what you say you want to do. And so yeah, we went. And for me, the easiest way, which was cheap also, yeah, even though it's carbon, is exactly. you know, was, just taking our local lanterns, which the kinky sellers use, the bubble, the bubble. or whatever, okay. because it, it, it makes fume and it creates smoke. Right. If you turn that thing on, it just creates smoke everywhere. Right. And now if I put it against the wall right now, and you, and you leave how many minutes, it just creates all right. that black okay. fume, yeah. which makes it look like it's bent already. Oh, so that's what we use. And uh, to me and two other people, we just held the bubble all against the wall, the span and everything, and we just kept bending bubble, and really, it was just kerosene and nothing <laughs> done Ghana Movie Awards, you did it so well the first time, we actually sort of like made everything turn out right, so you've done it like four consecutive times after that. How do you think through and come up with these individual pieces all the time? I, I'm sorry, but sometimes <laughs> these things just come to me. I can be driving and I can just, something just pops out in my head, oh, I, it's just circles, but then how can I put the circles together? Yeah. And, I, and then I start, you know, processing circles and things. Sometimes I start drawing it and then what happens is I'm like, ah, oh, no, it's not working. Then I just leave it. And when I leave it, I have to go back and process again. Now, when I process and I get through it and I really get it and I believe it, mm -hmm. usually I always have a conviction like, yo, this is gonna work, like, this is gonna work. Like, when, when I, yeah, when I, when I get that feeling, you it know, it, it usually I just go through it and it will work. So that's just a drawing space first. Then, obviously, after that, you actually have to do all your technical measurements. Yeah. Via the space, like sizing, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Because then that also helps with costing wise. Right. Because it determines the amount of material you need and the things you actually need. You know, so it seems like, like it takes a lot of time to do this. First of all, your whole thought process, mm -hmm. you know, um, actually con conceptualizing and then actually physically building. So definitely you'd be making some good money. But did you start off saying that I'm going to do this um, and then make money from it? So yeah, very frank with you. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. Like, I didn't know um, I would be working, like, you know, back with back. this, yeah, like yeah. that. But it's always, your last job is always as good as your next job, you right. say. And also, um, at a point in time, I remember, I think I was doing Sinking Sons at the time. And then I had another job in between to do Talented Kids for TV3. Okay. And then at that point, they, you know, we, we, after school, we work like freelance, or you go to give you the money, do the job, you get out, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And when they called me to do talented kids, they said, oh no, we have to pay this into your company account. 
And I said, well, I don't. I don't have, have a company. company. You know how we work, like you know. They're like, no, but we cannot do that. We have. You to can't pay, pay to individuals. Yeah. So was that like the turning point for you? Would well, you it was a turning point. To actually, I used. To, I always did call myself Art Direction House anyway. Okay. But it was a turning point for me to actually register the name as a company right. and you know start it you know gradually now. So I I just went to my my bank. I spoke to them about this. Can you go and register this for me? I went to register the name the document then in the open account and that's how uh -huh. the money was paid so ever since i just used that as you know ad direction as and did, yeah. did the job then you know i i felt this was the thing to go so we did our website we did you know put everything in place and we are still growing like it's still getting there so you say we does this mean that you have a group of people you're working with i am a direction house okay but I cannot do this alone. By yourself, definitely. So how many people um, do you have on your team? If you go on our team right now, I think we are six or seven people. Okay. But it's way, way. it's way more than that. But then if I'm building a normal like set, set. movie hours, whatever, I have my carpenters, a team of like seven or eight people. I have like a painter or something like that who, who will go on set with me. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you have a help or, you know, assistance who, you know, everything goes together. I have a guy who lays my carpets and everything, like purchases and come yeah. to lay the carpet and everything like that. But you have yeah. a solid team of say six or seven, right? Yeah. So how do you get those people to come together to you know Very support tight. you in what you do? You no, know, those main six that you work with, for instance. Yeah, well, I've done this thing uh, with them for quite some time. Did you meet in school? Did you meet on no, at, no, on, no? Yeah, on so work? when I began, I used to really use the people from school. I mean, which are uh, I I loved that because I felt they would easily mm -hmm. and quickly understand. Yeah. Them. If I was saying something, yeah. because they are in the same field. Yeah. But after that, you know, th these people that I met, you know, in town, they also stuff, forget like, it. You know, carpenters and things who understood what it was. Yeah. Once I have everything drawn and the measurements and stuff done, I can effectively just, you know, leave it and then everybody's building. But I always go because the thing is that. Whatever is in my head all the time is not the same thing that everybody else is thinking. Right. So, so you have to be there. To sometimes I direction. go back and I'm like, no, why did you do this like this? And like, oh, but we taught this. I'm like, no, no, no. This is what I was thinking. I think we should go out and do it like that. So then it almost always seems like I must be there almost all the time. Yeah. Because otherwise, then we keep going back, correcting things. So is that one of the challenges you say you'd face? The fact that you have to be there physically almost every single time a set is being built? Yeah. In the beginning, it was. But now it's not because you see, Sometimes you have to do how many different jobs at the same time. Yes, you can't be at so many places. I, yeah, at the I can only time. run through <laughs> them. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we actually on site installing something while something else is being built. Okay. I cannot leave when we are installing. You know, but then like I said, it's it's better now. Like uh, people and like technology, WhatsApp, right. anything, right. photos. You send it to me, and I can I can tell from the photo. I'm like no. This thing maybe is too high. Like bring it down, and I can just ask you, oh, what measurement is this? No, okay. I think it's wrong. Bring it down a bit, you know, things like that. And, and because you see, you're doing the job, but always think about the client also. Yeah. Because the client came to you because of a reason. Yeah. And they, there's something they want from you, and there's something they know you can give them. So don't think about the money until you've done the job and you're, you're happy. For me, yeah. that's what I think. Sure. If, if I'm happy, the client will be happy. You know, and, and when a client is happy, it's more, you know, happiness for me also. So because you, you, you've got to know how to manage the client's um, expectations. Uh, expectations also would be our budget. Yeah. Because you can't go wasting money. You know, it's a very, um, what should I say? It's a very capital intensive job. Okay. You know, because you're always buying stuff. There's nothing that's already there. Yeah. The, the, the reason also is, um, certain things you probably could have rented from prop houses like if you went to LA or the US wherever you can find prop houses where you can just rent stuff you know and you don't just get that here and you, right you don't easily find them here you got to do a lot of walking around you know to, to, to get so stuff. how do you overcome something like that well I don't know I've done it also for some time now so okay. I know some places to go to okay um, you've also got to know how to speak to people because people are always um, worried that you take the thing and it doesn't come back in the same right. whatever mm -hmm. um, so yes I've done you know we know I don't if you can't do it, then you have to make the things, which becomes more expensive also because you just need it for maybe one hour and that's yeah. it and then it's done, but you have to make it, pay money for it. Um, if you have your budget, why not make it? If you can't make it, then go look for it. 
But um, have there been instances where you've actually had to make something because you couldn't find the table? Yeah, yeah, you have to make something like tables or whatever, or a chair. Or, yeah, you, you make them. Okay. You, you, and we can make them. But that, I'm sure, will get better in the future where we'll probably have prop houses in the industry. Um, I've taken it on um, to, 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 to bring those. To make a okay. place like that. Right. Um, I think my final year thesis was about the absence of something like that in this country. Okay. And um, yeah, we have a, a company registered under our direction as a subsidiary, which is supposed to be a prop house. <laughs>
So there are two things. You've got to have a certain amount of money. Also, you, you, your suppliers got to know you. Okay. So everybody I probably buy pest pest from or I probably buy a certain type of material from know you. Over the years you've done this. So um, if I call and say, oh, send me this number of, you know, things and then after that I'll, I'll sort you out later. Yeah, uh, I mean or you know, in the two days time I'll probably, you know, make sure I make payment. So you have that something. relationship with the people that you work with? Yes, yes, yes. I've been able to develop it. You have got to also be very um, honest to them about it. Because yeah. if you say something like that to the person and then you don't turn it out then you know next time they're not gonna be there for you. Yeah. So what happens to someone like um, someone who's watching who does not have five grand or ten grand has never seen ten grand in their you life don't, before? You, you, it's the thing is you need it to start. But you don't need it again to start, like I said, because yeah. when you presenting a budget to somebody and they've got to understand that you're not in the position to, you know, pay for this. Yeah. Uh, you're coming as a um, doji. You're an individual, you're not a company. Do you have instances where you finish the job and then your 30% is not coming through? Obviously, yes. I mean, it's the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian, I don't know if it's everywhere else, but the Ghanaian. <laughs> Um, way sometimes it's tough depending, yeah. on, depending on what you're working for. Yeah. Um, sometimes also it's not the client's fault because or sure. uh, the agency's fault mm -hmm. because the client haven't paid the agency. Oh right. So the agency are giving you a certain part of the money, but they are waiting for their payment from the client. That way they can be able to like you know offset all their you know payments also. Yeah. So y you've got to understand it. Otherwise sometimes you're like you just, you, you just be a bad person every yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs>
black person, it's possible by a Ghanaian, it's possible by somebody from West Africa. Right. You don't, you don't have to be foreign to, to get it going. So right. I am motivated to be able to show people that, look, I didn't have to be somewhere to be able to do this for you. I mean, to do this here. And so I think that's what keeps me going a lot. I'm, I'm, I, I like the fact, for my job, I also see it as a, a means of invention. Because anything I create, it's it's me. I I made it. I see people sort of um, compare you to a very famous Hollywood actor. <laughs> this land is your land, and this land is my land. From the California to the New York Island, this land. Eh, need I say his name? So yeah, when I actually saw you, I see the resemblance a little bit. So how does that feel? Do you get it? A lot of people say you look like Will Smith. Do you agree or do you disagree? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had well, any instances where people actually come up to you no, thinking that? No, no, no. I've had very weird instances. Very oh, weird. Oh, tell us about uh, something. I mean, this is not something that I don't. I don't step out any day and not hear this. I've been on the streets of Hollywood before, and someone actually walked up to me, walked up, and I, I was so confused. <laughs> I, I didn't know what was going on. But the person said, "I want to congratulate you for all your good work." And and, obviously and I still didn't understand work, what. Right? I didn't. I was like, "How does this person know me?" I, <laughs> You know, so then you know there were people gathering around. So yeah. uh, and at the time I was working with Leila Jansi at the time. Yeah. So she was standing far back and she was just laughing. So when I turned, I was like, "Why are you laughing?" She's like, "Oh, you don't you know why the guy?" I was like, "No, no, no." You know. And she's like, "No, he actually told him it was me." And the guy actually <laughs> told him it was me. Like, so I was like, "Oh, I just deceived this guy." Like, I went that way <laughs> thinking, you know, he met was me. Yeah. <laughs> What advice would you give to someone who's watching you right now who wants to start their own um, entrepreneurship venture? First of all, you've got to believe in what you're going to do. If you don't believe in it, I don't know how you're going to even get through it. Work hard towards it. Do not think about the money too much. Do not, you know, when you're starting, don't think about the money too much. Right. You, I think people have to learn um, how to crawl before they walk. Because if you just jump and you want to walk, it's, I don't know. I don't know who just starts walking. <laughs> Nobody starts walking. Right. I'm sure if God wanted us to do that in life, he would have just put everybody where they had to be. But you've got to come from somewhere. How does one um, contact you if they want you to, say, build a set mm. for them? Set okay, so first of all, you can go on our website, www.adirectionhouse.com. Right. Okay. Um, you can find us on Instagram at adirectionhouse. Dot com. I mean, at Direction House, I think, on at Instagram. On Facebook, is also at Direction House. Okay. Um, um, personally, I'm just Tony Prince, Tommy T on Facebook, and yeah. And on Instagram. So we can either contact Tony or we can contact them at Direction House, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for being a guest on Young Entrepreneurs Speak. I hope you have had a good time interacting with yeah, us. Yeah, it was, like it was good. I hope I, I hope I was able to touch somebody. Somewhere. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. I yeah. actually really, really hope that um, you've been inspired by Tony's story today. He's a creative genius. He's a multiple award winner. You've heard the amazing things that he's done and continues to do um, on the Ghanaian media landscape. I hope he's motivated you to stand up, get up and do your own um, entrepreneurship venture as well. I'll catch you on the next episode of Young Entrepreneurs Speak. My name is Nefa. See you next time. Bye.